Um, hello, uh, in this tutorial I will show you how to use new augmentation types and their properties. Um, as you can see, uh, in version 1.45 each Voronoi fragmentation type has its own UI properties. And this way it will be easier for you to view them. So first one is uniform fragmentation type, good old simple uniform fragmentation type. Uh, 100 iterations, fragment. 100 fragments. All fragments has pretty the same size. Pretty simple. Delete. Next one is irregular. As you can see, it has uh, a little bit more user interface properties. Uh, first one is iteration. Uh, just to show how it works, I will set it to one and the offspring to 100. Uh, Iterations defines the areas of concentration and offspring defines the amount of points for each iteration. So in this case I will have one uh, concentration area of points with 100 points and uh, the divergence defines how far these points will be positioned from the center. And uh, as you can see there is two types of divergence. First one is percent and the second one is units. Uh, you can use only one of them at a time. So if I will change units, my divergence is zero now. If I change divergence, units is zero now. So for now I will use units just to show how it works. So I will have here five fragment. So uh, as you can see, here is one area of concentrations and about 100 points. There's less fragments because some points were generated outside of the object and uh, uh, they they are not generated any fragment. So I will delete. Uh, decreasing divergence, I decrease the spread area. As you can see, now it's smaller. And now I will use percents. Uh, percents do pretty the same, but it takes into account the object size. So in this case, divergence will be equal to Five percent from the object size. You can you need to use percents in case you use uh, a lot of objects with different size. Like uh, you can have uh, object such big and uh, maybe very small box like this one. And using this using units for both of them will generate uh, different results. So and if you use percents, it will take ten percent. You will, it will use divergence equal to 10% from its size and 10% from its size. So uh, now I will set it to 10. Fragment again. So here's new fragments. Now I will increase iterations amount. Let's say to 4. Decrease offspring. And maybe decrease divergence. So I will better see the areas. So as you can see, there is a first area, second, third, and fourth. Each each area contains about seven uh, points, seven hundred uh, seventy points. Delete it, increase it to seven, maybe change the variance even even less. Okay. So as you can see, in this way you will get uh, a little bit more interesting fragmentation pattern instead of uniform one. Uh, the next one is impact point. It uh, uses pretty the same properties. The only difference is that uh, you can use only one iteration and in this case it will be uh, the impact point or if and if you want to add more uh, iterate uh, more concentration areas you can use this property. So uh, to show how it works I need to use uh, interactive demolition. I will add this metal sphere impact object, and uh, I will set iteration to one, divergence to six, and I guess seven seventy points. So I will start simulation, and as you can see, all points uh, were gathered here. Uh, Increasing divergence, I will increase the concentration area. So 
So, in case you want to fragment uh, all other areas as well, you need to increase the second property. Like I will set it to 3. I will start uh, decrease convergence. Start simulation again. And as you can see, there is no only one uh, concentration area, not only impact point, but other areas as well. In this case, you can get more interesting demolition effects. Uh, so you will not get only a lot of you, you will not get a lot of tiny fragments only at impact area, but uh, at other areas as well. Increasing it even more. Okay. Next one is uh, selected particles or geometry fragmentation type. So to show how work this one, I will use this shape. As you can see, this is a simple shape, but I enabled it in viewport. So right now, this is a geometry, not just simple shape. I used three sides, just so it has some vertices. So select particles or geometry means that you need to have this object, is it a particle system or is it geometry selected when you hit fragment impact object button. So right now I will set it to, uh, I will use default uh, properties like 100, 0, 0, 0. As you can see, it used this p uh, vertices from this object to generate point cloud and then use this uh, generate generated point cloud to fragment object and we'll delete it so there is a first property is percent like I can decrease it to 50 or maybe even less hit fragment and as you can see now it used only 29% from all vertices I'll set it back to 100 Next one is uh, offspring. In this way, I can, uh, for each vertex I have in this geometry, I can generate even uh, two more, even more. Okay. Uh, this feature, when you use offspring, you need to use some divergence because in this case, all points with, uh, with zero divergence, they are all positioned at the same position as original vertices. So I'm increasing to about divergence to two percent from original object sites. Here's what I'm getting now. More points and uh, more divergence for them. Can increase it even more. Let maybe use only 77% for offspring. And now, here's what I have now 464 fragments generated along a path. I'll delete it. And the same here, you can use percents or you can use units for divergence. Next one is radial. This is a simple radial. It has rings and rays properties. 8 for rings and uh, 18 for rays. Radius in percents from original object size. Whether you see this percent sign, it means that use uh, distance taking into account the object size. So 18% means it will use radius equal to 80% from the subject size. Radial bills are set to 0 and divergence to 0. So simple fragment. As you can see, straight lines. Delete. Decrease maybe radius. Add some divergence. Again, taking into account object size. Size even more. Radius more. Next one is this Voronoi thickness. To show Voronoi thickness, I need to use some other geometry. I will use this one. So, uh, this fragmentation type takes into account object object's thickness. 
Mm, so if I will have this thickness to ten uh, percent, which means I will uh, fragment only it. I will fragment this object only at areas uh, uh, at the thin areas, at less than ten percent. This this areas uh, size less than ten percent of all object size, and each area will contain twenty points, and the uh, offspring for each concentration area again will be ten percent. Well, it so may, might sound pretty complicated, but uh, you need to play with it just to see how it works. So I will use this default settings. Uh, just hit fragment button, and as you can see, I have more fragments here. I will increase offspring. Okay, as you can see, I fragmented the object and it fragmented it only here. If I will decrease the thickness to let's say six percent, so this area becomes even less. I think it's too low. Okay, it works. And uh, increasing this thickness percent, it will start cover more and more areas. Okay, you see, now I use it to this thickness value too much, and it generated a lot of points, and each point has uh, 88 of spring points. So there are a lot of fragments. You need to be careful using this fragmentation type. And start with low values before you get what you want. Okay. A lot of fragments. Okay. 1370 fragments. Delete it. So be careful and do not use too much values for the thickness percent. So I will get uh, set it back to 10 percent. Let's say 100 spring. So this is my area. If I will uh, decrease divergence. This fragmentation type is pretty useful when you use it with some with interactive demolition. As you can see, pretty quickly and pretty good result, totally automatically. Just one falling fragment hits this geometry and it breaks only at the area where it's thin. 